Hey, traders, this is Blake Marr with Traders Summit. And with me once again, I have Larry Tantarelli from the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report. How are you, Larry? It's, it's been a while since I've seen you. Blake, good to see you. I'm doing great. Yeah, it's been a, a few months, I think, two or three months. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I think the last time that we uh, we, we saw each other, we were wishing each other uh, Merry Christmas and and looking at uh, sleigh bells ringing. But, uh, and, and a lot's changed. You know, the last time we talked, you you were talking about how a lot of stocks uh, were still showing some strength. And you were right. I mean, you were talking about Alcoa and Alcoa continues to rip higher. And uh, we hit new all-time highs, but then the markets have changed a lot since the beginning of the year. But I also want to credit you that you were talking about the weakness in ARKK and NET uh, at that point in time. And that was when the markets were near all-time highs. ARKK has uh, it's down like 30 some odd percent, 36, 35% since the time that we met. So not only right. did you hit Alcoa on the upside, you hit some of these tech stocks on the downside. Great job. So how do you see the market now? I mean, now it's kind of like we're in, I feel like we're in no man's land. What are your thoughts here? Thank you. It's definitely, definitely volatile times uh, with the VIX at 30. So the last I looked as I check on the TV, VIX is about 30. Obviously, we've got two things at play. So when year to date, right out of the gate, Bond yields broke out to the upside very, very sharply. That put a lot of pressure on tech early. And then obviously with, with the Russia-Ukraine situation, we went from bond yields breakout and the market was focused on the FOMC. Now with the Russia-Ukraine situation, that's another layer of volatility that we've got. But I, I still see quite a few pockets of opportunity there's a lot of strength out there, and there's a lot of groups that I'm still avoiding. So uh, when you say there's a lot of pockets of strength, a lot of groups that you're avoiding, I mean, we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of stocks really, really get halved and, 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 and you know, that got taken to the woodshed, if you will. Right. But you still have a lot of these big cap names that are still holding in there, not too terribly far off their highs. So what... What specifically pockets of strength are you seeing right now? And can you show us what you're looking at? Sure. And we'll, should I uh, share my screen? Go ahead. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we'll go to share screen and let me know if you can see my screen. I, I can see it can. perfectly fine. Okay, so a couple of things to get started. So off the top of my head, uh, going into today, there's about 850 large cap stocks in the market, over $10 billion or higher. And I think year to date, 260 of the 850 are higher. So while the market's down about seven or 8% year to date, and while there has been a lot of these tech stocks that have been hit pretty hard, there's still 250, 260 stocks that are higher on the year. And so I'll, I'll go into some charts. Here's the key, what I would say is the key uh, similarities. As I came into the year, I did a blog for my website members December 5th, right after the Federal Reserve shifted gears. And I spoke about this the last time that we did our, our uh, podcast. But the key thing that I'm seeing is the market is paying attention to earnings. So the biggest difference that I've seen is stocks that, that actually make money that can generate earnings are doing better than stocks that aren't making any money. Stocks that pay dividends have been acting very well. Also lower volatility stocks. So I would say higher quality, lower volatility, look for earnings, look for valuations, and then we'll go into some charts, but I'm gonna start outside of stocks. So I'm going to start right now in what I think is one of the strongest markets out there. And this is also driving stocks. So as you can see on the screen, and I'm gonna move us over a little bit, but DBC, is the, I'll put us up here. So DBC is the Commodity Index Tracking Fund. So it's approximately 50% uh, in energy, about 10% in gold and silver. It's got agriculture, about 20% 20, uh, 20 in industrial metals. But you can see this is a very strong uptrend. So this is a position that I've been in only for about the past two weeks, but you can see it's got a very strong trend going. Now, this is not stocks. This is a basket of the actual physical commodities. And, and I got into this position a few weeks ago 
when I saw what was happening overseas, and obviously Russia is a very uh, big exporter as far as natural resources, energy, agriculture, things like that. So this is, is just been a, a very, very strong uptrend, breaking out to, to new highs, multi-year highs right now. But here's the thing. Commodities, when there's a supply disruption, like you see right now, so Russia controls two thirds of the world's fertilizer. They're a pretty big crude oil exporter. So when you start to see supply shortages in commodities, they can't just fix that overnight. So the commodities, and we're gonna take a look at some stock charts, but as you take a look at the commodity chart, you might think that it's extended on a daily basis. It could be, it's got some volume coming in, but if we dial out to the bigger picture, and we look at where commodities are on the monthly chart. So you can see breaking out on the monthly uh, to about seven year highs. But if you take a look on the, the bigger picture, there could be some room to the upside in these commodities, especially if DBC can start to clear the $30 level. So I do expect this is going to be a volatile group. It's gonna be news driven, but this is a group totally uncorrelated to the stock market. And it's been performing very well. So we're going to take a look at some uh, commodity-based charts, if that's okay. So we're going to start Absolutely. with a few positions, few positions that I've got. So uh, Vale Rio, which is down, they're based in Brazil. They're a global miner, trades at a low PE. So it looks like four times earnings, 10% dividend yield. So in this market, if you remember in the beginning, I talked about low valuation, high dividend, good cash flow. Very, very strong uptrend. So I've been in this position for about a month or so. You can see it's in a strong uptrend. It's over three rising moving averages. 20-day, 50-day, 100 are all moving higher. 20 recently crossed the 200-day. But two key things. As soon as bond yields, if we look at January 1st, as soon as bond yields started to break out to the upside, so did this, uh, this commodity stock. For whatever reason, I'm sure there's correlations. I don't spend too much time on the correlations. I spend more time on the charts. But you can see even in a market that's down 7%, 6 or 7% year to date in the S&P, very, very strong uptrend. We took a look the last time, and I'm going to go through some, some charts quickly. We took a look at our uh, last podcast together. So we looked at Alcoa on the 21st, right in here. It was about 50 or 55 or 60, up at 83. So aluminum prices hit a record high. Once again, supply disruption, you know, they can only make so much at one time. So just overall, if you take a look at this entire metals and mining sector, tech resources, they're based out of Canada, plenty of uptrends in the commodity sector, in industrial metals, energy, is still one of my favorite groups. So I started to buy into energy October of 2020. I've been holding Devon Energy for a while. I've been holding Chevron. And the key thing about the energy sector, it's the, as far as valuations, it's the lowest valuation of the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. Also pays a nice dividend yield, 3%. But once again, crude oil, is in a very strong uptrend. And you've got stocks like Devon Energy, you've got stocks like Chevron. Now Chevron's a little bit extended right now. I've been in Chevron since the beginning of December, a little bit extended on the chart. It hit about an 80 daily RSI yesterday. So I took a little bit off the table, but I would say on any type of a pullback, while it might be extended here, on any type of a pullback, I still think that the energy group is viable. I think that this crude oil situation, I looked, crude oil is trading about 110 right now. I think Brent is about 115. JP Morgan put out a price target this morning of 185, that they, they think that we could see 185. Now, I don't know. Predictions, you can't spend predictions, but these charts, when we talk about tech stocks that have been underperforming, these energy charts are holding up very well. I'm going to touch base on one more so Nutrien is in the fertilizer space, another materials stock, $49 billion market cap. Now, I don't have a position in this one. We can't own everything. And I don't want to have too much of my money in commodities because when they pull back, they're all going to pull back together. 
and they're going to pull back sharply when they do. But Nutrien's been on our, our members' top 25 list quite a lot over the past year. And you can see it's just a nice, steady uptrend higher. They're the largest producer of potash fertilizer in the world. And with the disruptions that are happening overseas. Now, this is another one. I think it's extended here. But on any pullback, I'm going to try to get a position myself. Now, just because I think it's extended doesn't mean it can't go higher because we've seen what, what's happening in the market. But for me to take a new position, I'm going to see if I can get some type of a pullback. So that's in natural resources. And I was going to we'll say... I was going to say, Larry, you know, but by the time people watch this, whether it's, uh, you know, we're filming this on on a Thursday, people might be watching this over the weekend. Is there is there yeah. looking at different things to trade? I mean, you know, commodities can have already pulled back, but you are looking actively at pullbacks to be entering in back into some of these positions or some of those charts that you are pointing out. Correct. So All some right. of these, I think, are extended right now. And I do think that they'll pull back at some point, but I think that the pullbacks will be viable. So I've got them on a watch list, not something I'd buy today. But now I'll go over some stocks that I think are viable right now. We're going to take a look just outside different sectors across the board. I'm going to go over some tech stocks. I'm just looking at my list here. So Altria, Philip Morris, this is a position I've been in for about a month and a half or so. And the actual forward PE. It's about eight times earnings. It pays over a 6% dividend, but we can see this is just another steady uptrend. And, and this market, and I think as we go into the tightening phase with the FOMC, I think the market's going to continue to focus on dividends, companies that can generate cash flow right now. And Philip Morris, if we take a look on the weekly or on the monthly chart, actually, just to give you an idea, you can see this is very close to a multi-year breakout. So if we go down 2018, it's just clearing over 52 right now. If it can clear over 58, then you're talking about new all-time highs. And this is, this is for a stock, as I said, I think it trades seven or eight times earnings. So it's got you know, not too much downside and I think a lot of upside. So we'll take a look at a couple of tech stocks real quick. So one that I bought yesterday, and which I think is viable right here. And I've been very careful with technology. So right now I've got about 14 or 15% in technology versus 28% for the index. So I've been very underweight technology. I bought Fortinet yesterday. It's a few dollars under what I paid for it. It's been a volatile market, but a couple of key things that I like about the chart. So the first thing is it's one of the few tech stocks that's actually trading over all four moving averages. So the S&P 500 is below the 200 day, the uh, NASDAQ 100 is, but Fortinet trading over all the moving averages uh, had a nice recovery recently, but they're one of the leaders in cybersecurity. And obviously, as you know, cybersecurity is a very big topic right now, and, and this could continue for a while. So I'm looking for extra technology exposure. And I think if Fortinet, can close over 350, then I think it opens itself up to a lot of upside and potentially new highs. So I do want to have some technology here, but I want to have what I think are the better charts. Uh, now we'll go into a tech stock that I have that is not a better chart right now, but it's, it's one that I think has enough potential upside to make it worthwhile for me to hold it. So AMD, so I got into AMD about three weeks ago and it, it started to move higher It hit that 50 day. But then two days later, the, uh, the, the Ukraine situation really picked up and AMD was down 10% in one day. And then I found out that about 90% uh, of one of the semiconductor raw materials is based in the Ukraine. So semis took a, a, a pretty big hit. So this chart, I will say this is a difficult chart right now. And until it can clear that 50-day moving average, then there's a 50-50 chance that this one doesn't work out. But if I was looking for some high beta tech upside exposure, I think AMD is a chart to have on the list, but I'd like to see it over that 50-day moving average. And then one more that we'll take a look at just outside of, of the entire conversation 
So healthcare is is a good in a good spot because it's somewhat defensive, regardless of what the economy does. It has nothing to do with geopolitical situations. It has nothing to do with inflation or the Federal Reserve. And the healthcare sector has some very, very nice charts. So Amerisource, Bergen, $30 billion market cap, 18 times earnings, dividend yield. But you can see it. It's just a nice, steady, lower volatility uptrend. And I don't have a position here. I've got it on our, our members list. But I think that it makes sense with all the volatility that's out there in the market with the VIX up at 30. I think it makes sense to have some of these lower volatility, like a Bristol Myers, uh, an Altria, something like that, to offset these wide ranges. All right. Well, let me let me ask you just one quick question uh, sure. as we wrap up here with, with technology. You know, I know you're, you're you're looking at some technology exposure. Are you focused on yields as well? I mean, if if, if yields continue to rally, that's going to put a you know kind of a negative spin on on tech on the whole technology sector. So, do you pay attention to what's happening in in, in the bond markets at all? I do. But what's going to happen is I'm going to focus primarily on the charts. So while I know that rising bond yields should put pressure on tech stocks, the market's already adjusted quite a bit from 408 to 318, so about 25% off the highs. Now, now Powell came out yesterday and said the Fed, the Fed might be a little more dovish and, and not raise as fast or raise as many times as the market thought because of this uh, geopolitical issue. So I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens on these charts. But, but yeah, definitely, if the Fed continues to tighten sharply, then it, it does create headwinds for the tech sector. But I want to go chart by chart. All right. Well, Larry, I want to say I appreciate your time with us and 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 you know and contributing to the Trader Summit community. And uh, you know, as you update these charts and you're looking around, how do you how do you how do you communicate with your members? And can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So the best way is to find me is just on my website, bluechipdaily.com. Uh, there's some of my past chart work, some of my past ideas over the past two years. Also, I've got a member's Twitter page. So throughout the course of the day, so I'm on the, my member's Twitter page all day, every day, starting at 8 a.m. And I post real-time updates when I see you know, things that are happening in the markets. But that's the best way to find me, bluechipdaily.com. All right, Larry. Well, you know, I, I want to make it uh, a little bit less time the next time I do speak with you because I think uh, two and a half, three months is just too long. Let, next time, let's long meet up time. sooner than that. Blake, I think that's a great idea. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for being here with us. And guys and gals, if you like what Larry does, make sure you give him a thumbs up. If you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel down below. It is free to subscribe. This way you don't miss any of this great content, not only from Larry, but from the rest of our contributors. Larry, have a great day and uh, good luck in the markets. Blake, you too. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Hey, traders, Blake Morrow here. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell notification so you do not miss any of our market-related trading analysis from some of the leading industry experts. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.